get to ask Pastor how the welcome is done again because it's been such a long time. It's been, it's been a year. And in the midst of the joy that we feel as we celebrate our sweet 16, I don't know if you can feel, there's also the atmosphere where you want to tear uh, because God has done something. And when I look at you and I know <clears throat> some of your flights, I know some of you have lost loved ones. You lost friends, you lost colleagues. You lost hope at the best of times. But we thank the Lord for this church and for this house because we took Jesus to the hospitals. We took Jesus to the streets. We took Jesus to the communities. We took Jesus to the airwaves. And before I pray, I want to tell you this. We might be celebrating our 16th birthday, but the vision is not 16 years old. The vision was born a long time ago. Even before you were born, Sam, the vision was there. He's waiting for a man. Amen. He's waiting for a woman. He says, I'm going I'm to pair you all up. And I'm, and I'm waiting for the people. We often want to tell God, you send the rain and then we'll build the ark. God says, no. You build the ark and I'll send the flood. And I thank God for the people that he's brought here today. Because we are the ark of the covenant of God. And I'm proud to be here today just like you. So would you join your hearts with me as we begin to pray. My Father, I bless you. And we dedicate every praise to you. The sovereign God. The great I am. The one who was. The one who is to come. There is no name that is higher than your name. There's no name that's sweeter than your name, Lord. And we bless you for the great things that your hand has done. We bless you for this church that has never closed. We bless you for this church that never ceased to pray yes. or to intercede, Lord. Yes. And we thank you. And even as we celebrate our 16th yes. birthday, I'm reminded of John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Thank you. I thank you that you loved the world that you gave Pastor Anil and you gave Pastor Linda and you gave Christ's kingdom ministries. So we will go into all the world and we will share the love of God. Amen. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. It uh, gives me a, a privilege and an honor after one year to welcome Prophet Clive Maraj to the podium and he's going to do the welcome, I believe. To God be the glory. Amen. For the great things he has done. So today we want to welcome all you guys back. It's so good to see faces even with the mask and without the mask. And we give God the glory for in this time, He has grown us larger than we can imagine. And we give Him the praise for all our partners tuning in, uh, SOTP, Christ Kingdom Ministries at home as you watch this live. We give God the glory for He has had His hand upon this church. And the church, despite what anyone has said, the Word of God has not returned void. It is still standing and we'll still be standing in years to come for our children's children. And we welcome you this morning. And we give God the praise for you tuning in. We thank you, SOTP, Jesus Christ Ministries, Cape Town. We thank you for our partners, Salem, uh, Bethesda, all our partners, all the pastors that have stood with us this far. I declare over you this morning as I welcome you. Very, very soon we'll be gathered together. And no disease will stop us from gathering. For the church of God is moving. So be blessed, enjoy the service, and know that God is still on the throne this morning. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise Him. Come on. Come on. Hey. Can we clap for Jesus? Amen. Seek Him now, King of Heaven. Son of God, and throne above, every cross upon his shoulder, carry for us, carry for us, seeking now, our King surrender, find a word, a perfect love. 
hear his cry. Father, forgive them. Spoken for us. Spoken for us. When he said it is finished. Oh, our hope has just begun. The grave has lost its goal. that a miracle can happen in this place. Just not to believe that a miracle can happen in this place right now. Just begin to worship the King of Kings. Lift up your hands. Open up your mouth with your own voices. Just begin to worship the King of Kings. Amen. Hallelujah. 
yeah. We worship you, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. The atmosphere is changing now. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. One more time, can we sing the atmosphere? The atmosphere is changed. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. Your love surrounds us. Hallelujah. Atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds Overflow, overflow, overflow in this with your love, your love, surround, you are, you are the reason, you're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love, surround, overflow, overflow, overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love. The 
your kingdom come, your will be done here as in heaven. Can we lift up our hands and just declare this one more time, Spirit of God? Spirit of God, for fresh order, we need your Your kingdom come, your will be done, here as in hell, spirit, spirit, spirit of God, for fresh on us, we need your presence, your kingdom come. My God, you have been so good to us. You've been so faithful to us this day. And we thank you for your amazing love towards us. Your indescribable love towards us this day. And we thank you that you created us for such a time as this. For an appointed time, for a set time. That you have created us and so that we might fulfill your purpose. And we thank you for the end that you've already set to God. And you promise in your word that we shall see the end of our faith. And we thank you this day. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor this day. We just come with humble hearts before you. With hearts that are submitted for what you have done. And we thank you that this is not a work of man, but a work of the almighty God. The God of miracles, the God of the impossible, the God of the supernatural. Oh, we thank you this day, Lord. We thank you this day, Lord. And we will continue to give you all the glory, continue to give you all the praise this day. And we bless you too. We bless you on this 16th anniversary. We bless you this day. 
as you have blessed us. And we thank you and we give you praise this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to share a bit about some of the journey. And as Pastor Neil has, and you would hear the, the journey that we have gone through as Christ Kingdom Ministries. But there's three things I want to leave with you today. And I want to encourage those that are watching this day, our partners. And so I want to say thank you even to our partners who have been supporting us in their prayers and in many ways that you've stood with us. And we appreciate that, that you've walked with us in this journey. And as we celebrate, celebrate with us this day. Because not only is it our celebration, it's also your celebration. And the House of Christ Kingdom Ministry is also your celebration. It's not about the pastors alone. We're all together. Because we know the word. In Hallelujah. We know the word that talks about in, in Nehemiah. Let us build together. Let us build together. We are built together. And when I continue to look back at this amazing building, I can assure you it wasn't the work of man. So there's three things I want to leave with you this morning. Is that one is that one's got to have a vision. And even to our partners and, and men and women of God that are trusting God for their own building and their own premises, and even for you as individuals sitting here and those that are viewing, have a vision. Have a vision in front of you. Write the vision down. And thank God that we have visionaries. in Pastor Neil and Pastor Linda because the Lord had laid it upon their heart. They had a vision in their heart to do what God had called them. Had a vision to build a building and a church that God had called them to do. So you and I need to have that vision. And as we know also, as, as has been mentioned before, that there was a prophetic word. And you and I have had many prophetic words in our lives and we need to take that word and war with that word. You just cannot leave it there idling. You have to take that word and pray and declare and prophesy that word that you have received. And as you know that the word over this place and this property that it shall be a house of worship. A house of worship. And that prophecy has been fulfilled. So take that word. And third thing I want to leave with you this morning is that you've got to stand in faith, believing. Believing the impossible. You see, you can build a 500,000 rand edifice. It doesn't take faith. But when you set out to do and put up a building of 25 million, you need faith. Because when God has called you to do the impossible, you need faith. Amen. But more important is that we come in faith together. We stand in agreement. We stand in faith together. And it was beyond our imagination, beyond our mental capacity, if I may put it that way, to build and to put up a facility in Sydney. Almost 25 million rands. And we didn't have the money. And I remember that we had just 3 million rand in the bank account when the property came about. And they insisted on the price being at 4 million rand. And we needed to raise another million rand so that we could pay for the property, which effectively was the land. And in one Sunday morning meeting, we raised a million rand. It's only because there was a vision, there was a prophetic word, and people stood in faith with us. You, together with the pastors, stood in faith with us. And we were able to raise a million rand and pay for this land. There were many challenges about the property. And now to put up the building structure and to go forth. To put up that facility or the amount of 25 million rands was a major challenge. And people said to us that the banks will never lend you any money. They won't look at it because... The church, as they see it, is not a viable institution because there's no guarantee of income. 
But I know one thing, that God's our source. Amen? He is our source. He will always be our source. And so when we went to the banks, we said to the banks, you go ahead and process this thing. Because we know what our God is able to do. And so after tons of documentation and putting everything together, supernaturally, they gave us a facility of 11.3 million rands. It's not heard of. I remember clearly sitting with the bank. There was a new regional manager that came into that bank. And it was the last piece of documents that were signed. They've signed the facility letter. They've done everything. And I actually know him and where he comes from. And he said, his words were, that if I was the regional manager at that time, I wouldn't have signed this deal. But you see, God was in control. He knew who to place there and who not to place there. The bankers that we had that was helping us managing the entire process were believers. Both of them were believers. But see, God had already orchestrated it. He already ordained it. Because if this regional manager had come in before that, we not, not, might not have been where we are today. So, I want to encourage you that whatever it might be, God is always orchestrating things. He's working behind the yeah. scenes. That we don't have to fight for it because the battle is, is, is the Lord's. But we stand in faith believing that He will come through for us. We cannot waver. We cannot vacillate. We cannot doubt. We cannot be in unbelief. But we've got to stand firm on the Word and His promises. And that's what we did. And that's what we want to give Him thanks on this morning. For what He has done. For what He has done and He has come through for us. So we rejoice. I rejoice together with you. And there's greater things that God has in store. For this church, for this ministry. And we thank you once again for your support. And your prayers. And all that you have sacrificed. To where God wants to take this ministry. We're coming in a time we've entered into a new era. And an era, I believe, of a revival and a great revival that's coming out, coming through. And I can say one thing is that Christ Kingdom Ministry, together with our partners, we're ready. We're ready. Amen. We're ready. Because He's called us for such a time as this. He's ordained us for such a time as this. So thank you once again. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. We speak, Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every talk a teaching starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, the light of fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over fear and all anxiety, 
every soul held captive by depression. I sweet Jesus. Cause your name alone, Lord. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak your holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. We shout the name of the Lord from the mountains, shout Jesus from the Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness, Lord, but every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak your holy name, Jesus, we will shout, we will shout the name of Jesus from the mountains, shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak your holy name. Jesus, your name is Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name Oh, you 
these children clean and pure heart, good grace, good dad. His name is Jesus. One more time, swing wide, swing wide for you, heavens. Let the brains go up as the walls come down. Oh, creation, everything with breath, redeem the sound for these children. kingdom ministries and I want to give God thanks for that hallelujah amen God has to be God to have chosen me God had to be gracious and merciful to for have chosen me and they say what good can come out of Puchepster hallelujah 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 this morning, um, before I share a little bit on the journey, it's also a special day for me as my son called me up last night and he said, Dad, is it okay or is it possible for you to dedicate his son and my grandson? And I say, why not? Amen. 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 And today, I'd like to call Rowan and Delisha to come forward. With both my grandsons, Alex Jeremiah and Raphael Noah. You know, it is, for me, it is a special day on, my, on our birthday to do a dedication of my grandsons. For prophetically, I'm declaring it will be a continuation of the anointing. It will be a continuation of the blessing of God. In the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Uh, to Rowan and Delisha. As you come on this special day. In the house of the Lord. 
the U.S. parents over Raphael and Noah promise before the congregation and to the Almighty God that you will bring him up in the ways of the Lord. I do. Amen. You can see his love. And so today, won't you just raise your hand to this young man. Grandpa's baby. Raphael. Raphael. The Lord has healed. And so I prophesy upon you, my grandson. You will bring healing to the nations. And wherever you go, to the glory of the declaration of the word of the ever-living God. Noah, a man who was perfect in his generation. A man who walked in the way of the Lord. A man who stood in faith. And so today as the priesthood, and today as your granddad, I prophesy upon you, O oh young man, that your way will be perfect in the Lord. In your generation, your way will be perfect. You shall not sit in the seat of the scornful, nor walk in the way of the sinner, but your delight will be in the law of the Lord God Almighty. You shall be a man of faith. And Raphael, as the ancient documents declare him, an archangel of the Lord, I declare and I prophesy, you young man will be a mighty warrior, in the kingdom of our God. I prophesy upon you as I lay my hand. The curse of the bloodline stands no longer. For you stand as the redeemed of the Lord. I prophesy in the way of the Lord and the hand of God and the gracing that was ordained in your life. There shall be no delays. There shall be no lack. But you shall have in abundance in every aspect of your life. You shall walk in, the, in wisdom. You shall walk in knowledge. And you shall walk in the understanding of the Lord God Almighty. And so I bless you. And so I dedicate your life for the glory of our God. This day on our special day. I dedicate your life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit this day. I seal your life with the blood of of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and I declare upon you young man no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue raised against you in judgment we bring to no effect in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth amen and amen give us everyone kissing yay yay amen thank you Today is indeed a great day for Christ's kingdom ministries as we are celebrating 16 years of ministry. Wow! Hallelujah! Happy birthday to Christ's kingdom ministries. Be blessed on our special day. I wish we could be all together to celebrate this day and give thanks to God. We really miss you, all our beloved. Hang in, for soon and very soon, we shall be able to worship together in the sanctuary of the Lord. We have prepared a video for you on our journey. The journey of Christ's kingdom ministries thus far. I believe, this will be of encouragement to you and help you understand this ministry better. Sit back, relax, and enjoy what the media department has put together.
Beloved, welcome to my office at Christ Kingdom Ministries. Beloved, greetings to you in the sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Today is indeed a special day for us at Christ Kingdom Ministries. We at Christ Kingdom Ministries are celebrating 16 years in ministry. Hallelujah. We walked through a journey from the year 2005 to 2021. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Beloved, I declare today thus far the Lord has brought us through. Hitherto has the Lord helped us. We dedicate every praise to our God. May the name of our Lord be magnified. May the name of Jesus Christ be exalted. He is the Christ over Christ's kingdom ministries. The success of this ministry is Jesus Christ. This day, we acknowledging our success is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God, for his kindness and his love, for his grace that abounds towards us, for his goodness and his mercy. Also, the success of any ministry is people. And today, I thank our dedicated teams of pastors, leaders, and their families, and our faithful congregants, who made this ministry a success. I thank all our ministry partners who have supported us through encouragement, prayer, and the word, and contributed to the success of this ministry, namely United in Christ, the Sons of the Prophets, and Bill Winston Ministries. You are all amazing team. God bless you abundantly. I thank all those who have linked with us to our services and ministry via various media platforms. You have truly inspired us to forge to do greater. I pray that as you connect with us, you will be encouraged and inspired in your walk with Christ and receive your breakthrough and miracles that you are trusting God for. I'd like to take this time, beloved, to share with you my journey and the journey of Christ's kingdom ministries, who we are and what our ministry is involved in. I am Pastor Anil Manilal, the senior pastor and visionary of Christ Kingdom Ministries. I was born and raised in a town called Pochepston, which is approximately 125 kilometers south of the city of Durban. I am currently residing in Durban. I was born in poverty, but raised in strength and blessing. When I graduated as a quantity surveyor, in 1984, I had to remain in the city of Durban due to employment opportunities. I got married in December of 1984 to Linda Beverly, who also hails from Pochepson. Linda graduated as a teacher at the end of 1983 and taught for 24 years and thereafter joined the ministry of Christ Kingdom Ministries. Linda and I were blessed with two children. Rowan Joel and Trisha Nicole. Both our children are married. Rowan to Delicia and Trisha to Leolin. We are grandparents to two grandsons, Alexander Jeremiah and Raphael Noah. Every praise to our God. We are blessed to have our children and their spouses serving and supporting in the ministry. I was born into a Hindu home but surrendered my life to Jesus when I was 14 years old. At the age of 16, I joined the Anglican Church in Port until 1984. When I got married and relocated to Durban, I joined the Full Gospel Church in Mayer's Temple in Asheville and a year later joined the Bethesda Temple in Carlisle Street, Durban. On the 3rd of March, 1991, the senior pastor of the Bethesda Temple resigned from the full gospel denomination and initiated Conquering Through Prayer Ministries, which I became a member of from the inception. I served in this ministry for 12 years. At the end of 2003, due to circumstances that not of my own doing, 
I had to leave. I am always, however, thankful for the spiritual impartation, training and opportunities afforded to me to serve the people and God. For approximately one and a half years, my family and I attended Sunday services at a church in the area. In the latter part of 2004, I heard the voice of God in my life, the call of God to pastor a church again. The Spirit of God gave me the name of the church. He gave me the scripture in Revelation 11:15 that revealed the name Christ's Kingdom Ministries. Simultaneously, the Spirit of God gave me the scripture, Isaiah 61, which was to be the foundation of the vision. And Linda had a witness in her heart to the name and the vision of the ministry. With all this confirmation, we were ready to start ministry again. On the 6th of March, 2005, in the obedience to the voice and the call of God, we launched Christ's Kingdom Ministries. We rented a premises in 374 Brickfield Road, Overport, which at that time was an existing cinema. This building was dilapidated and needed much repair and renovation. Christ Kingdom Ministries was launched in faith, in total dependency on God. The rent alone at that time was 10,000 rand per month and we had to come up again with a huge deposit and then we had to find money for electricity, water and other expenditure. But every praise to God for His wisdom, for His leading and His provision. We were always forever grateful for the commitment, faithfulness and generosity of the people that joined the ministry. It was not all smooth sailing at the start. But we persevered with total dependency on God. The call and mandate of God remained at the forefront of our minds. We prayed fervently and we were confident in the promises of God. We experienced many divine interventions of the miracles of God in this place. After approximately nine years of ministry in, the, in this premises, we were informed that the entire building which housed the church auditorium was for sale. We were intentional on not purchasing as parts of the building were used for residential and commercial purposes. Our decision was to have a premises that will be totally consecrated and dedicated in ministry to the ever living God. We did experience a measure of difficulty in securing a suitable premises to rent thereafter. And with all the constraining factors, and very importantly, with the time factor against us, as an interim measure, we decided to move to the factory premises of my business, Desert Projects in Bryding Industrial Park. This, is, this out of town relocation did not sit favorably with all the congregants and many chose not to continue the journey with Christ's kingdom ministry. And I also like to take time to thank all those who were with us, even though they left, but they were in that time, I can truly say they were a blessing and encouragement to us. It was indeed a humbling experience and time in our journey at Desert Projects. We, however, remain focused on the call and the purposes of God for us as a church. In spite of the physical, locational limitations, I want to say we experience the unlimited supernatural working power of God. It will be an experience that we will be forever etched in our minds and hearts that the anointing and the glory of God's manifestation is not determined by physical structures, but the hearts and the souls that are passionate and hungry for Him. After just two months, we moved to the suburb of Asheville. We rented a section of Centenary School Grounds and erected a thousand-seater tent. In this stretch of journey, we again experienced many sharp bends and bumps and yet again, I can say 
we continued to remain focused, committed to the vision, and most importantly, to the mandate of God upon us as a church. It was here in the tent that we experienced constant strong opposition from other faith groups. It was clearly evident that some individuals were determined to see us as the church sees in operating. Yet again, we were confident in the promises of our God that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And God was fighting for us, pushing back the darkness. The greater the attack, the greater we press on in prayer. Many congregants became disillusioned and felt overwhelmed with all the challenges and religious intolerance and a few hundred disembarked on the journey. The change in the seasonal temperatures, the extreme heat in summer often left us drenched in sweat and the extreme cold in winter caused us shivering and shaking. Rainy days saw us wading through pools of water and the winds and the rains ever so often caused weakening and weathering of the tent. And several times we had experienced part of the tent collapse, but we persevered. Nevertheless, beloved, God remained faithful and the congregants committed and faithful and endured in all this adversity. I want to say to you against all odds, like Abraham, we staggered not at the promises of God, but hoped and believed in our God. We remained at the tent for three years and eight months. And during this time of mi the ministry flourished. The church grew in numbers and spiritually. And we continued to abound in the work of the Lord. And be a blessing whenever and wherever opportunities presented itself. Finally, hallelujah. Breakthrough came after 11 years. 11 long years, God brought us to a place of Sheba, a well of oath, a place of promise and overflow. This place called Sydney, 94 Spearman Road. And I am seated on the seat in my office in that beautiful building. We purchased a dilapidated building which housed a bottle store and a nightclub for four million rands. And I give God the glory that though we were in a tent, we raised up four million rand and bought that property cash. This place, beloved, was a playground for drug addicts and prostitution, a place of debauchery, a place brought much destruction and heartache to the local community. It was a contributing factor of poverty, broken homes, and many social evils. When plans and costs of the new buildings were projected, many believed the dream was impossible. When we planned to build a church on this premises, we had much opposition from many members of the community and some of the church fathers, amazingly, from this local area. But I knew in my heart it was the will of God for us to establish a church here. Every other door of better and greater premises was shut from us. Premises that we knew that we can get and we knew we can afford. And many times in some of the premises, we knew it was ours, but suddenly it was taken away. But this property was divinely orchestrated by God for us to acquire. It was not our plan to establish a ministry here, but the plans of God. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the will of God that prevail. Beloved, we chose to walk in obedience to the will of God, and thus we are here. Despite much opposition, with a dedicated team and our dedicated, faithful, and committed members we saw the dream come to pass. When I took our team to see the existing premises, I said to them, this ugly duckling 
will turn into a swan. And when the people see it, when the building is complete, they will say, wow. And I'm sure it is a war factor. Let your eyes behold the goodness of God. Let your eyes behold what a united people with God can accomplish. Beloved, sitting here, it just reminds me to think it is such an amazing story that after 25 years, God brought me back to Sydney. How so? I did not realize that I was in Sydney ministering before because time goes and you forget. But I came to this area with the senior pastor at that time on the 3rd of March, 1991. The first Sunday of March where he first started his ministry in Sydney. And we remained in Sydney for only three to four weeks. Amazingly, after 25 years, 25 years later, on the first Sunday of March, 2016, here we are in Sydney, 9,136 days later. Now, this is very significant. The number 25 represents grace upon grace. It is a strong meaning of a holy presence. And everyone who visits the sanctuary says there is a strong presence of God here. From the time God first called Abraham in Iran to the time his son of promise, Isaac, was born, took 25 years. This is our Isaac. This is our promise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And so this morning, beloved, as we continue, I'm going to share with you some of our accomplishments to help you understand this ministry more. In the year 2010, we started a ministry called United in Christ. The aim was to gather the priesthood and leaders under the banner of Jesus Christ to work together as one to advance the kingdom of God upon the earth. With this, this spirit, together in unity, we will accomplish more. Over a short period of time, in five years, just in Malawi alone, from 2011 to 2015, we ministered to approximately 10,000 pastors and leaders in Africa. Many of them are still meeting together for prayer and ministry. In 2010, we sent a team to Kenya. We also ministered in Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Zambia, and Eastern Cape. I've been through many more nations, but these are the nations that I'm listing is what we ministered as Christ Kingdom Ministries. We have a strong network also in Pochepston, my hometown. This is headed by Pastor Harold Stephen. We have sponsored crusades and Bible schools in Africa, which was undertaken by Jesus Alive Ministries. And Christ Kingdom Ministries have been investing in Africa for a long time. We are currently planning a United in Christ Africa conference bringing 54 nations under one roof in preparation for a mighty revival in Africa. In 2010, we had a 10th crusade in Pochepston. During the planning, many said it will not be successful, especially when they heard we are putting up a 4,000-seater tent. Some said the 10 crusades are outdated. Some thought it was madness when they heard the cost for a one-day crusade is 250,000 rand. But we went ahead. For we had a witness in our heart that it was of God. While the team was erecting the tent and trying to set up, I think every rain cloud in that area burst over the tent site. 
And I know many would have said in their heart, I knew this will not work. But the next day, hallelujah, the day of the crusade, the sun, S-U-N, in all its glory shone over the tent. And the sun, S-O-N, in all its glory shone over the tent and favored us. Behold, the tent was filled up. Approximately 4,000 people attended. In one altar call, beloved, 393 people gave their hearts to Jesus. To God be the glory. We had testimonies of many miracles and deliverances as we prayed for hundreds of people or a couple of thousand of people. We have been involved in many ten crusades in various areas, leading many to Jesus Christ. We have partnered with Edith and John Ministries, headed by Pastor Harold Stephen, running Bible schools free of charge in many rural areas. We are in partnership with Jesus Alive Ministries that is doing evangelical crusades in Africa. In the past five years alone, just in Tanzania, Kenya, and DRC, a total of 1,162,344 souls came to Jesus. Wow! Thank you, Jesus, for giving us an opportunity to network and partnership with so many people across the nations of the world. We are here to preach the gospel to the uttermost parts and see thousands of souls receive salvation. We have partnered with Joint Aid Management who is involved in giving porridges to school kids. Currently approximately 1.2 million children a day is fed. Hallelujah. We supply sandwiches to school kids at Spearman Primary School, which is on our road just nearby. And we feed 200 children twice a week at the school. Christ Kingdom Ministries is involved socially. Every day we give meals to hungry, especially those who live in the streets and those who are not working. They come to church to fetch a meal. And we gladly give them a meal. We give groceries to families in need. Almost on a daily basis. They come to church to collect from Monday to Friday. We support approximately 40 families in our congregation every month. Beloved, we take care of the poor and the needy. Even during the pandemic restriction, the church was open to fulfill the ministry of helps. We offer free counseling and prayer for the public every day from Monday to Friday at our church from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Beloved, we are here to heal the brokenhearted. Once a week, on a Saturday, we run a deliverance and healing program at our church for drug addicts and those bound by alcohol. Apostle Craig Hargreaves, from Bethesda Ministries in Port Chepston helped us to get this ministry started. This ministry is now headed by Advocate Santos Manilo of Christ Kingdom Ministries. Beloved, we are here to set the captives free. One of our senior pastors of Christ Kingdom Ministries, Pastor Alvin Muggan, a great minister of the word, he is part of the leadership of Faith Ministries Alliance Africa. He is also a board member of Joseph Business School, which is part of Bill Winston Ministries. We have partnered with Prophet Andre Q. Lowe, who heads the Sons of the Prophets Ministry, who set up a team that is running a 24-hour prayer since the pandemic started in March last year. For all those affected by COVID virus, and others who are very sick. We have seen hundreds being healed supernaturally. Many who people thought will not make it, God brought them through. We have been praying against this pandemic and seen the death rate reduce. During the pandemic, we went with our team to pray at various hospitals 
for the COVID patients and all those who were sick. We have had many testimonies of God's divine intervention at those hospitals. Some even got healed and discharged the next day. To God be the glory. Beloved, during the lockdown pandemic, we delivered food to many households in the area almost on a daily basis to those in need. We are involved with several organizations in Sydney and the surrounding areas. We are always on the forefront for emergencies in the area. Over the years, we have invested financially and spiritually into many ministries and individuals. During the pandemic restrictions, we have had services every week that was broadcast via our website, WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. This broadcast brought encouragement and blessing to thousands of lives locally, nationally, and internationally. Christ Kingdom Ministries over the years have opened our doors to several organizations to use our facilities free of charge when they did not find a suitable place to meet. In fact, beloved, I think we at Christ Kingdom Ministries are just getting started. All this was just a warm-up session for what is to come. We are constantly striving to achieve greater and be effective as the church of Jesus Christ for the glory and his honor. We have a great vision and we have a great team. Together, beloved, we have accomplished much. I trust the journey of Christ Kingdom Ministries inspires you and challenges you to do greater. It is okay to start small. Don't forsake small beginnings because that's where God makes us start. But as long as you remain faithful, as long as you remain in God, and as long as you remain in prayer, I say to you this day, our God will bring your dream to pass. With God, all things are possible. Don't give up. God is on your side. God bless you. Amen and amen. Beloved, greetings to you in the sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christ's Kingdom Ministries, where Jesus Christ is Lord. And today we say to God be the glory. Great things He's done. Come and join with us as I welcome you to the fountain of life and to Christ's Kingdom Ministries, the altar for His glory. Beloved, welcome. Come enter our premises of Christ Kingdom Ministry. Oh, in all the earth, your name is strong and mighty. Your name is glory, all same great. In Him we are saved. The name of Jesus. was blessed and motivated by this video and this morning I'm going to continue on the journey of Christ Kingdom Ministries and show you how the word of God through prophecy has helped us establish Christ Kingdom Ministries believe his prophets it is written in 2nd Chronicles 2020 so shall he prosper we believe and I stand here today as a testimony together with this team and leadership and the sons and daughters of this house and we stand and declare his word never fails when God is on your side the end is victorious 
When God is on your side, you will triumph. Amen. With regards to the property of 94 Spearman Road, Durban, South Africa. This property was on sale for an amount of 4 million rand. We as the leaders of Christ's kingdom ministries made an offer eventually to purchase it on the 4th of October 2010. It is amazing that the servant of this house, Pastor Alvin Muggan, was the one who brought this property to our attention and said it is for sale and helped us through the process. This offer was made while we were still at Brickfield Road. And so this day, the sale agreement was prepared. And as you heard earlier on, we paid a deposit of 3 million rand to secure this property. The premises at Spearman Road was still occupied. The tenant was operating a bottle store and pub. And you, as you heard earlier in our journey, it was a place of debauchery. The tenant was given notice on the same month, on the 27th of October 2010, to move out of the property by the end of January 2011. These dates are important. At the end of January 2011, the tenant was still there and there was no signs of him moving out. And so the next phase of challenges began. The landlord issued summons in May 2011 for eviction, but the tenant ignored the summons. Now this was putting pressure on us and we were under great pressure and much concern especially for me as a senior pastor of Christ Kingdom Ministries. To understand what I mean by coming under pressure, prior to this property, we lost two property deals on other properties. It was all set for us to purchase. It was a done deal. Then suddenly, the deals were cancelled. Huge disappointment. Now, beloved, on this third property, we are facing a similar scenario. And I want you to understand what I faced as the visionary. What will the congregation and some of the leaders say about my leadership and anointing upon my life? That I don't have the ability, I don't have the anointing, I don't have the grace to settle anything. That I'm taking them nowhere slowly. Can they trust my word again? For I made two promises before and it failed. Because twice in the past, I told them we have the property to build a church. There was celebration, hallelujah, and the joy was short-lived. Well, I had to tell them, sorry. The property is no more ours. Now I don't think I need to explain any further concerning the situation of us being under pressure. Almost a year went by. No progress. No progress on this property. The tenant was still there. Then, on the 19th of August 2011, we received notice from the landlord that the tenant had engaged an attorney to defend his rights to remain on the property. They found a way to delay eviction. They said that they had a verbal lease on this property to the end of 2013. Now this was a lie. But they found a way to do this and I think on two occasions, there was no written lease. For they were, it was a verbal lease for probably two years in all the time they stayed here. And in the court of law, they said they are justified. They are justified to fight it to say 
Yes, there is a verbal lease still standing. Because on two occasions, there was a verbal lease. And then who can deny it? That they're going to be on this property for three more years. Their modus operandi was to frustrate us to a point that we will withdraw our purchase agreement so that they can buy the property at half price. This is from the intel that we received from the landlord. This matter was getting from bad to worse. The landlord wanted to cancel our sale agreement with us. We did not accept and chose to push in prayer. And we had to get into serious warfare. This important information we did not make known to the congregation. Because I think they would have probably left and said this is now too much. Then another bomb drops on us. The tenant makes an offer to purchase this premises at full price of four million. He said he has first option to purchase this premises as per some bubble agreement again, which I know is a lie. And he was pushing so that he could buy this property. Then another bomb drops. Another religious organization made an offer more than was advertised. Beloved, the situation was now serious. This was not sinking in mud. It was good as drowned in mud. The situation was now deader than dead. But with a select few, not a select few, who was informed, we chose to still believe and stand in faith that we will be owners of this property at our price of 4 million rand, despite all things against us. We continue to believe our God will make a way for us. And we have seen we had snippets of divine intervention in the midst of chaos. We have seen the divine of the Lord when two agree or three agree touching anything good, sir. We get news from the landlord that the offer of the tenant and the offer of the other religious group that brought in more money was not accepted. They stand with us who made the first offer. Give the Lord a praise, somebody. All I can say is that when you're faced with the darkest of evil, now we learned this. Can you understand? So now I can say it. When we're faced with the darkest of evil against you, stand. Stand in faith. Surrender the battle to your God. I have a saying that we, I live by and we in the leadership live by. I'd rather die believing than giving up. And living in unbelief and living as a quitter. Finally, after approximately two years later, on the 1st of August 2012, the tenant moved out. Hallelujah! The Lord our God had broken through for us. And let me tell you something. We took occupation, say I was waiting at the gate with the team. When he moved out, we moved in. We were taking no chances. Hallelujah. In the midst of the challenges, God is at work. As Pastor Alvin shared a testimony, we moved to the tent on the 3rd of June 2012 in Asheville at the school grounds. And then the transfer was happening. And we needed to raise a million rand. And in the tent, in less than five minutes, no exaggeration, we raised one million rand. Hallelujah. <coughs> to God be the glory. Beloved, we were smiling. I was smiling from ear to ear. I was doing the break dance. I mean, I'm telling you, it was, it was awesome. Victory. What's finally won? The battle was won. And our plans for
for the new church was ready. Can you believe that? Ready for submission. You know why? We gave the architect and the engineers the go ahead before we can sign the purchase and sale agreement. The moment we came and paid our deposit, we told them go ahead. And when the land was about to take it away and all the challenges, we, we, were, we were quiet. We let them carry on. Because you can't stop it if you stand in faith. And so the plans were ready. And so at the beginning uh, uh, of 2011, yes, we started with the plans. The plans was now submitted to the uni uh, municipality for approval. Can you imagine now the joy in our hearts? Yo, after a long journey, our plans have gone in. Finally, we were getting closer to the dream. Then, then, the next phase of attacks came. While we're in the tent. Beloved, I want you to know, there was no other place to move. Because by then we had a big congregation with all the parking that was needed. Every building and warehouse was not suited for us because it was in tears. And we needed a big uh, auditorium to, to minister to the people. Now you understand, no other place available to us. And so we're in the tent. And while we're in the tent, and then the trouble started. Several of the members of the community brought a litigation against us and said it was illegal for us to pitch a tent in the school ground and have church. And so, the trouble started. They ignored that there were meetings before with the team at the school, the governing body and the principal. We finally agreed it was okay because it was a short time. And we were paying rent, etc. And so the situation was critical. They made us do something I don't think it was ever done in South Africa. We had to uh, apply to the National Provincial Office of the NPA for a rezoning, temporary rezoning of the place of education to allow for a place of worship. We had to then gather together and employ senior counsel, architects, architects preparing sketches for a tent. Come on. You understand? We had to advertise in the paper, advertise like you normal advertise for a new building, send it to everybody. And then the objections began to come even more. We suddenly had, we had another fight. Everyone wanted us closed. And those of you who were in the tent, what happened when we were having services? The neighbors brought these speakers or whatever you call them, put it on the fence and began to play their religious music loud. So that we can't worship our God. That was one deal. For the new church, this site, this property, the plans was advertised also. Remember there's two wars going on. One we kicking us on a temporary place and we, we battling to enter into a new place. You understand? So we were, we were in trouble. We were drowning. And all the documents went out to all the neighbors, etc. Then the objections began to pour in from many of the community in this area. Even from some pastors in this area. Begin to object and want to know why we have come to build another church in this area. And I met some of them. I told them, when your daughters were raped, when your families were falling into debauchery and started dying of alcohol, uh, all these things and drug abuse. You all were silent when the servant of God has come to turn this place of debauchery into the house of the Lord. You have something negative to say. I told them up front. I said, I want you to know something. I am not here by choice because I'm not coming to come invest money here in Sydney. 
It was never our desire. But if it's the will of the Lord, it was the will of the Lord and nothing's going to stop us. I think when they began to hear a roar, suddenly they moved. But the trouble was still there. Then the municipality sent us notice requesting so many documents with special requirements that me as a qualified quantity surveyor in the building industry for so many years have never heard such a requirement. We are to employ professionals in, I think, in every category, even, even engineers to specify and clarify the glass on break in this church. But I tell you what, two fights, one on the ten side and one on this side. Both locations, the enemy want to shut us down. The word, the kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent taken by force became a reality to us. We didn't have to go and study the scripture and look for discernment. We were living the scripture. We went through several months thereafter of challenges trying to sort out all these requirements and matters on both locations. Then, we won the legal battle at the school. It had to be God for the government to allow on their documents a temporary allocation for a place of education to a house, a church. It is history in making. Give God a praise, somebody. And no one was going to stop us. But there was a clause only for a short time, temporary. And we told him one year. We were now in 2013. And going nowhere with the approval of the church plan stuff. Then something amazing happened at Spearman Road. I was on site one afternoon in the frontier. Now remember, this was a bottle store. Now, I mean, you need to see those pictures. I think you just saw the pictures through the journey. With one of the leaders, I was standing at the front entrance. The same area was the front entrance. A woman going past stopped and asked me if I was the pastor who is going to build a church here. And I said, yes. She then asked me if I am aware of the prophecy given over this place. I said, no. What prophecy? She said, Prophet Kim Clement prophesied that this bottle store, that this place will become a house of worship. I said, wow, praise the Lord. Thank you for letting me know. She said, it was an answer to prayer that is being fulfilled. Let the church be built here. She said, this place caused much heartache and suffering and some lost lives. She said she was glad to see the prayers being answered. And prophecy being fulfilled. She didn't say much after that and she left. An amazing thing is, I have never seen her again. In 2 Chronicles 2020, that's when the sin became a reality. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall he be established. Believe his prophets, so shall he prosper. We, beloved, from that day we came back when the lady was gone, we lifted up the prophecy and with other times with all our pastors, we lifted up the prophecy of King Clement on this property. We proclaimed and prophesied the prophecy over this place. We declared this place shall be a house of worship. We declared the Lord our God will honor his word over this place. We declared 
that as we place our foot on this property, prophecies shall be manifest. And nothing and no one is going to stop the building of the house of worship. We declare the word of the Lord shall stand. We declare the Lord shall cancel every spirit of opposition and every spirit of delay and every spirit of contention that held us in siege so long. Beloved, suddenly, suddenly, the Lord began to move like a mighty warrior over this place and over Sydney and over every situation, over every challenge we face and over every opposition as we lift up the prophecy, the Lord God Almighty executed judgment and he brought forth the desired bless in this house. Somebody give him praise. We experience breakthrough upon breakthrough. Even with the finances that have been played a big part in assisting. Miracle. That thing happened, Irene, because we had a prophecy. The shifting of the banks. I remember the time we went to Arvin. He told him, prepare the document. And they said, you know what? It will never be done. Arvin said, if it's beyond your portfolio to prepare the documents, we will go to the highest authority in, in, in that bank. And I think now they, they, they're being prepared. We said, prepare it. We'll deal with the rest later. And so it is. The Lord broke through. Why? Some of you, you shall not die and live. You know why? Because of prophecy. I say to you, our journey is great. You know why? It is not by might, nor by power, but it is by the Spirit of God, by the Word of the living God. The Word of the Lord will stand as long as you stand with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise, somebody. We will now reinforce. Now you know I'm coming from the building industry. We are now reinforced with a word of prophecy for this church building. It was our word. It was our word. We took it and we did not waver. Every objection failed. Everything that the municipality wanted was done and accepted. God's favor was upon us. Yo, I wish we had the prophecy earlier. We had a team of pastors, also from Port Chepston. I don't want to acknowledge them. They have come here in that time and they stood in this old building. They opened up the word and they began to prophesy a breakthrough in this place. Thank you, men of God, for your support. May the Lord bless you. Finally, the plans were passed on the 20th of October, 2013, almost three years later. Construction of the church started in January 2014. We said, Lord, you said this place will be a house of worship. We know you will make a way for every provision according to your prophecy. And God made a way. And so this morning, I humbly stand here and say, Oh, beloved, let your eyes behold the manifestation of prophecy. Let your eyes behold prophecy fulfilled. It is through the word of prophecy and prayer that we made it. It took six years and two months from the time we made an offer to purchase this property and then finally completing this church building. I believe God's delay is not his denial. I didn't know this then. I'm telling you now. Are you understanding? And so I'm encouraging you, pastors. 
This man learned it after. But I know it is true. I believe for the vision. And I've been hearing this. I believe for the vision he has given us. We needed to have tenacious faith. And that the only way he could bring us to that place of being ready for what he has in store is to put our faith in trial and was to develop it and through and how it was on trial so that beloved we can handle what is in store in our new season with the Lord many a time we want to put a timeline for on prophecy but only God's time stands be patient and be in faith there is a waiting, testing, refining, and then fulfillment. Beloved, as I come to a conclusion, when you get a word of prophecy, you have only two choices. One, believe. And number two, believe yet more. No other way of fulfillment. In 1994, I was given a prophecy. I had many prophecies. But I'm bringing 1994. In fact, many prophecies. Believe If you get a prophecy, write it down. We had many words and we didn't read it. Write it down and the enemy snatched it away. In 1994, twice, I was given a prophecy that I will be a minister. I will pastor a big church. I will travel and evangelize. And I will be in the forefront of God's army. You men of God. And servants of God. It took 11 years. Before. The first part of the prophecy came to pass. That I could be a senior pastor of a church. And 11 years later. The other part came to pass. That I will pastor a big church. 22 years later from that prophecy. What a journey. But I got news for you. For someone to say, whoa, so long. Beloved, in this season. It's a season of the supernatural move of God. Where he's cutting time short. What took 20 years will take two years. The suffering of the past will never be your bondage now. For you will walk in the leader, in the freedom and the liberty where God has released and issued from the heaven above. So you will walk in revival. You will walk in favor and you will walk in the blessing of God. I prophesy to every son and daughter that is building a church. I prophesy to every minister that is suffering. I prophesy there will be a rising up. There will be a shifting and there will be a turning around. For the Lord our God will favor you. For the Lord our God will breakthrough for you. For the Lord our God will make a way for you. Father, ignite that faith. Father, protect that faith. Father, ignite that prophecy. It shall not die. It shall not die. It shall not die. But it will bring glory and honor and praise to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise somebody. God's word will never fail. And so this day I declare, this building is a testimony of people standing united for a cause. Give the Lord a praise. It is a testimony that if you believe the word of the prophet, you will prosper. The manifestation of God's word in this house let it be an encouragement to you. When you step into this building, you are stepping into prophecies fulfilled. Grace, I'm using, I got a hanky. I want to use yours on purpose. And when you touch it, my friend, the anointing that is upon me will be a double portion upon your life. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray this morning or this day that you will step into your prophecy. You will step into your prophecy fulfilled as we are in this prophecy fulfilled. I pray you will pick up your prophecy again. Lift it up over your life. It is waiting to manifest. This journey, this revealing of our journey for you to know that because many a time people see the success now and they associate you with pomp and pride. That's what many pastors said to us. They think we had it made. They think our success was easy. They don't know the journey. And so we make it plain. Even to the congregants of this house. They don't know the dedication. They don't know the tears. And the loneliness. And the fasting and the prayers and trusting God. It was a fight for survival. But more so. It was a fight for the glory of our God. That his name and his fame will be lifted up. Hallelujah. It wasn't easy. It was so easy for us as a team to quit. It was so easy for me to have given up many occasions. But we as a team declared. We have a cause to die for. I bless you so this morning, oh beloved. That this morning, through the impartation and the journey of this house, I want you to know the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God towards us. All is looking for somebody to stand. All is looking for somebody to believe. And the rest is his. Hallelujah. And so I bless you. And I bless. As a servant of God. I bless every member. I bless the team. I bless you with all blessed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. May his grace abound. And may his face shine. May you rise up in your season and do great exploits. I prophesy as a servant of God over this house that you sons and daughters will do greater. That your letter will be greater. And you will accomplish much for the glory of God. I bless you and I seal this blessing with the blood of the Lamb. And I pray that God will keep us together as one. One body. One God. One Holy Spirit. One Bible. One vision. And one people. That together we will be unshakable. And nothing will be impossible. How many times was Abraham tempted to think. Did I hear God? Did I believe in vain? Romans 4, 18 to 21. You can read that. Where he said, I stagger not. Do not stagger, beloved. Hang in and don't hang up. I once again thank all those who stood with us and helped us make this dream possible. And to see the success of Christ's kingdom ministries. Without you, we would have not made it. Thank you. God richly bless you. And reward you. For your labor of love that you showed. Towards us and towards his name. I say to you this morning. As we are ready, ready to step into the 17th year. Like Arvind said. I think we connected. Ruth. We are ready. We are ready for the next journey in Christ. 
And our reign is going to be quicker. It's going to be greater. And going to be more powerful. I believe it's going to be great. And it's going to be blessed. So I say come. Join in for this next journey. Join in for the great season that is ahead. Yet there is more prophecies over our lives. And this ministry is still to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. We got plenty in the bank. Come on. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And he's cutting the time short. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to happen quickly. And so I thank you. And so I bless you. Be blessed. And be ready. As we're ready. 2021 as we step in actually on the 7th of March we step in we step in this day a great day for this new walk in our God hallelujah hallelujah let us give the Lord a praise beloved we are going to join in for communion we are going to have Pastor Arvin Magan to come so family and friends this day, this table is a table of celebration. As we, have, as we celebrate our 16th year, it's a table of the celebration of what the Lord has done. It's a table of victory because truly He has given us the victory and He will continue to give us the victory. So even as we partake together, we celebrate together that which the Lord has done. For the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup of the new covenant. He said, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And this morning, as you're at your home, and as we're going to serve the communion, we're going to partake together. And those that are with us here this morning, let's just partake together as the ushers will serve you right now.
ocean Floods the night and soul prevails to shine Salvation way I chase to break Jesus, we just thank you for your body that was broken for us. That above all, you thought about us. You took upon your body every sickness, pain, and disease. Every depression, every defeat you took upon yourself. So that we might become whole and complete. That we might have the victory this day. Because you gave us a victory. And we thank you for that divine exchange this morning. And as your word says, we remember. We will always remember the Lord. And your broken body that was broken for us. And we thank you as we partake and we receive your wholeness and your completeness. With nothing missing, nothing we thank you this day in Jesus' name. Let's just partake. And we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that was shed for us. The blood that has cleansed our sins. The blood that has made us whiter than snow. And we thank you that there's power, there's victory, there's healing, there's deliverance in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we thank you this day that we could partake and we could receive our forgiveness and our completeness. That everything's been washed away because of the blood. That we're a new creation in Christ Jesus this day. And we partake and we receive this day by faith. Hallelujah. We want to be privileged again today. And uh, we have the cake on our 16th birthday. And we have Prophet Clive and Rowena that's going to do the grace of cutting the cake.
to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear CKL. Happy birthday to you. One more time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. 